Kyra Irving, the professional basketball player that uh, may be one of the most talented players in the history of the sport, challenges Dave Portnoy, who is the barstool owner, and shoots the ball like this. To a game of 1v1, and Dave Portnoy accepts. Yes, this is actually real. And the most wild thing about this entire situation is that whatever the outcome is, Dave Portnoy is the absolute winner here. And I'll explain why. But first, we need to explain how we got here. So the company of Barstool originated from Massachusetts. And on top of it, Dave Portnoy is a massive Boston sports fan. And if you remember, he went to jail for Tom Brady during Deflategate. And at the time, Barstool was pretty popular. Like, I've been following him for a long time. I'm actually from the Boston area as well. So I've known of him for, I don't know, since I was like, high school almost but that was the time where it just absolutely shot up because around new england everyone knew him but it almost became a national story when dave portnoy literally got taken in cuffs away from the nfl corporate office because he wanted to talk to roger goodell to argue with the deflate gate thing dave may be one of the best in the business of taking something that happened in his life and making it to viral content and then he can monetize it for barstool and that is exactly what is happening right now with the kyrie irving situation and this whole entire beef really started with this video. You guys are happy to be back. I plan on resigning it next year. So if you don't remember, Kyrie Irving was traded to Boston, basically said that he was gonna stay, but then left. And this started basically one of the biggest beefs between a fan base and a player in the NBA. And Kyrie basically becomes the mortal enemy of Boston fans. Whether it's him not facing the music and not coming to Boston games, saying he's like injured or something, or when he actually does play, he goes under the logo and stomps on it, which gets everyone all fired up, including ex-Celtics players like Kevin Garnett. Garnett posted on his Instagram story at that time saying, so no one's going to say anything about Kyrie stomping on Lucky? We going to act like we didn't see that going on? You can't do that. All of us need to be better for real, for real. I'm just saying. Or Kyrie Irving giving the middle finger to the fan base. End of the day, I am not the biggest Kyrie Irving fan but you gotta respect the fact that he's willing to fight back and he is not afraid to do whatever because when it comes to Boston there's always a ton of theatrics and it's very Kyrie Irving like so basically I'm trying to paint the picture that Kyrie Irving and Boston fans aren't uh let's just say on good terms and we all know how Dave Portnoy rolls this man goes crazy and lives right on the ledge where you're kind of like ah uh, man I don't know that seems a little far but Portnoy is all over it he lives on that line and let me tell you he has a lot to say about Kyrie Irving. Like 99% of the things that come out of his mouth are negative and very critical. So I'm sure eventually one of those things that he said about him would end up in Kyrie Irving's hands and then we would have something like this. So now let's all add the strong dislike and passion between Kyrie Irving and the fan base slash Dave Portnoy and fast forward to now. So basically, if you don't know, Kyrie Irving is kind of doing the same thing he did to Boston in Dallas. He's kind of holding them hostage where he's like, I'm not agreeing to anything, but I'm kind of in, but he really isn't at the same time. He's like weighing out his options. You know, it's just what Kyrie Kyrie Irving does in every location he's at. And this report came up from Sham Sharania. This is where the situation actually began. The tweet says, Sources, Kyrie Irving has reached out to Lakers star LeBron James and attempts to see if James will come to Dallas. Irving is a free agent this offseason. Then Dave quotes this tweet and posts a ton of clown of emojis and says, It's amazing how many and seemingly intelligent people fall for Kyrie Irving's scam. And obviously this went viral and so viral in fact that Kyrie Irving actually saw it and uh, responded. So Kyrie Kyrie replies back to this and basically says that Karma will catch up to Dave because he runs his mouth so much. I won't even lie, if Karma has not stopped Dave Portnoy by now, I'm not sure it ever will happen. The man just does what he wants and says what he wants and really nothing happens. But then the two go back and forth a little bit, tit for tat, all that. Then ultimately Dave did what he does and mocked Kyrie again. And then Kyrie Irving challenges Dave Portnoy to a game of 1v1 like he's not going to accept this challenge. Kyrie, what are you doing, dude? This is is exactly what Dave Portnoy wants. He calls Kyrie's bluff and accepts. Now the ball's in Kyrie Irving's court. And officially, Kyrie Irving may be in one of the worst possible spots. Because only two things can happen. Number one is, he plays Dave. But I don't actually think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be the latter. But let's just assume they do play. It will go viral. And Kyrie will absolutely own Dave. And it'll be funny. Then let's just say he doesn't play him. Which I think is more likely to happen. Dave can now use all this against Kyrie and paint him as a villain. And this is already happening to Kyrie Irving. For whatever reason, that one day Kyrie Irving had 
good time that day and was chirping at everyone. Portnoy replies to one of Kyrie Irving's tweets, and Dave posts a screenshot of his DM he sent to Kyrie Irving on Instagram saying, when do you want to do this? With no response from Kyrie Irving. On the tweet, with the screenshot, it says, I did send you a DM yesterday to set up a game. Need less talking and more action. Novel concept for you, I know. Kyrie Irving has no idea what he just did to himself. He played right into Dave Portnoy's hands, and he's just in a terrible situation now. He's in a lose-lose no question. This is going to be an exact replica of the beef Dave Portnoy has with Roger Goodell. And this stems back to the situation I explained earlier about how Portnoy gets arrested for Deflategate. Then for the first game of the Patriots season, his team organized Clowngate with 70,000 towels at Gillette. And the towel had a photo of Goodell with the clown nose. And it was like very, very viral locally. And I'm sure it was very big nationally as well. Like, they literally handed out 70,000 towels. Then he gets banned from NFL games, and then this is where it gets kind of wild. Portnoy announced on Twitter that he paid 250k to win the rights to watch a Monday night football game with Roger Goodell in his basement named the Fan Cave, where the commissioner hosted the NFL virtual draft in late April. The money raised in the NFL auction event will benefit a number of charities to help the virus during the lockdown, including the American Cross and Feeding America. And then Roger Goodell declines and I don't even know if Dave Portner got his money back. It just absolutely spiraled from there and this is the point where you knew everyone in the world knew what was going on with Dave Portnoy and Roger Goodell. Roger Goodell was required to testify at the House of Representatives Oversight Committee hearing on the toxic workplace allegations made against the Washington Commanders. And it turned pretty interesting when this question was asked. Commissioner, uh, you believe in the First Amendment, don't you? Yes, Congressman. Why do you ban Dave Portnoy from NFL games? I'm pardon me, I couldn't hear your question. Why do you ban Dave Portnoy from NFL games? He's a journalist. In fact, he's a Sports journalist. Why is he banned? Uh, Congressman, I'm not familiar with that uh, issue. I'm happy to. Really? This is a literal person in the government asking Roger Goodell, why is he not allowing Dave Portnoy to the event? And why am I sharing this whole entire Roger Goodell situation with you? Barcelona was just fully sold to Penn Entertainment in chunks. In January of 2020, Penn paid $160 million, 36% stake of the company. But then recently, Barcelona sold the rest of the remaining shares to Penn Entertainment, which was 64% and they bought it at $388 million and both of those combined is a whopping $551 million and one of the most successful campaigns in Barstool Sports history was the Roger Goodell beat and the selling of the Goodell merch. Dave literally prints money off of controversy in this Kyrie Irving situation will just be another one that Dave adds to the bucket. So yeah I'm just trying to paint the picture and this is a long way of saying this is exactly what Dave Portnoy wants and it's exactly how we drew it out. I just can't believe people keep falling for this because like it's the oldest trick of the book.